<laughs> the modern road makes gas masks. Uh, dude, this is a big one. Yeah. Homemade gas masks. Yeah. Are you nervous? Well, cautiously optimistic. <laughs> That's encouraging. I think this is going to be okay. My only misgiving is that all of these ingredients are readily available and none of them are terribly exotic. It's really easy to put this thing together. Well, we got two liter soda bottles. We got uh, soda cans yep. that it looks like you make the housing out of. But what's the magic go-go juice? The most important thing are the activated carbon pellets. Now these are what you find in like Brita water filters. I got it at a pet store for aquariums. So this is just from a pet store, yeah. activated charcoal. Now I know activated charcoal is what they'll give to people who have overdosed yes. or who have something in their belly. Yeah, something. it bonds with uh, the uh, contaminant that you've taken into your system. Uh, they, the vets often recommend that you give it to a dog if he eats chocolate or something else that will make an animal sick. Theoretically, we're gonna breathe through this stuff and whatever the tear gas is. Theoretically. <laughs> it's going to filter out all of the impurities, and we're going to put some cotton in there to add a little extra layer of protection on all top right, of let's, it. Let's start. Let's, let's just dive in here. Step one. Yeah, step one. What you want to do is you want to cut the bottom off of the canister. And the bottom of the two liter will actually be the top of your mask. Okay. You want it to fit over your face, so you don't want to cut off too much. You'll just take it and cut like a rectangle. So the idea right is the wide part should be a band across your forehead. What you want is something like this. Ah, uh, yeah. What your face fits into. And you want the sides to wrap around a little bit. It's going so to work great. From, okay, from the front line looks like a Roman centurion mask. Okay. See? Is, it, is that a fit? The tape will help with that, but yeah, you want to make sure that you get as much contact with your skin as possible. What about there's kind of a gap up here, yeah. and then this is poking in. It feels like the pokey bits are pushing the mask off my face. Uh, so I'm going to try rounding, rounding these down. Oh, that feels much tighter. Yeah. And, and in fact, if you have it sealed off and you can suck and keep it in, then I think you got a good seal. Oh, and you could take the uh, the cap and toss that. So what we're gonna do is wrap electrical tape, not only for sealing it up, but just for comfort, really, so that you don't have these sharp edges jabbing All into right. your skin. I kind of feel like we're the Elon Musks of garbage. <laughs> All right, I'm feeling pretty good. It's a tight seal. The next part is that we want to uh, set up the filtration system. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna take these cans, and I was making mine rather long, actually. You figure the more that you're breathing through, the better, right? Um, yeah, and before you cut it, it's a little easier if you poke the holes in the bottom. Breathing first. holes first, okay. Yeah, All right. And so you wanna get plenty of these in there. Now you're using a compass, right? Yeah, just to make several punctures. So I, I assume the thought here is we want enough that there's a free way for air to flow through, but we don't want so much that the charcoal can fall right out, right? Correct. So is that looking good? That looks great. So after that, you're gonna wanna put some cotton padding in there. You can use these regular little cotton discs. So those pads keep the charcoal from spilling out, but they also keep you from inhaling any kind of like heavy dude. That probably filters. Any particulates. Correct. Yeah. The trick is though, the more you put in there, that's another obstruction. And so that's the balance. You want the airflow to be going through this uh, respirator part, not coming in through the sides. Exactly. We're gonna take several spoonfuls of the charcoal pellets and just fill them up in the can. And then for extra added measure, you can take another little piece of cotton and put that on top. You were mentioning that those were difficult to breathe through, so I'm gonna try thinning this out a little bit. I went ahead and did the same thing you did and just kind of split them in half. And before you tape it all together, Go ahead and just put it up to your mouth and see if you can breathe through it when you put the cotton in there. Try to breathe through this and make sure. Yeah, I can feel okay. it coming out the bottom. The next step, take your can and just place it in there like that. Do we seal up the top of the can or we're not worried about it cutting in? You know, I didn't find that that was necessary. Okay. Maybe later I will find that it is very, very <laughs> necessary. We'll find out. <laughs> the key here is making sure that you don't leave any leaks. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, don't do that. Here, I'm, I'm gonna take just a little bit of this cotton and wedge it on top. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're going in in a controlled environment, but it seems like if you just wanna have this in your backpack, you'd want it totally sealed up. Yeah, that's There you go. Point. So in this case, I just stuffed a little bit of cotton in there. Now see if you can breathe through it. Oh, it is harder. That is one of the biggest challenges, is you have to be really careful 
about how much cotton you put in there. You know what? Because that can I'm quickly gonna, yeah. obscure your airway. Okay, so it seems like we're just about set. We've yeah. got our respirator part. We've got the seal on our face. How do yeah. we keep it attached? For convenience sakes, just take a rubber band, cut it in half, punch a hole over here. I usually get it up by the temples, yeah, just by the, the corners where it connects. And I just take a rubber band and cut it in half and then tied knots at the end and pushed it through the hole there. So I guess it's important to figure out the right amount of tension on your rubber bands to keep it sealed on your face? Absolutely, I mean, you want something flexible where you can just slip it on and off. But I have seen other people who have made fastens and clasps and adjustable belts. It feels like I'm actually going to have to hang on to it and keep it pressed to my face. The airway is just occluded enough that whenever I exhale, air starts escaping the sides here. Well, I think it's okay on the exhale, right? It's probably so, yeah. Where I'm taking these two guys, threading them through. Yours looks a little bit more official than mine. <laughs> my plan is not so much for it to work, but for me to look good when my corpse is uh, on, on display. Oh, wow. That's a good tight seal. Oh, look at nice. That. That looks really I gotta, effective. I gotta seal this off. Yeah, you got. You can hear the the charcoal dancing around when you inhale. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm a believer. All right, I think our homemade gas masks are pretty much complete. Now we get to the brutal part, the testing. How about some actual tear gas, Brian? <laughs> These were available just on Amazon.com. I picked up three of them. These are from Fox. They're called uh, 5.3. The 5.3 refers to the fact that most pepper sprays are rated about a million or two million Scoville heat units, SHUs. This is like the most brutal stuff. It's rated 5.3 million SHUs. In the event that we have to treat our faces, if it's worse than we thought, if these don't work, an alleged home remedy is 50% antacid like Maalox, this is an off-brand, and 50% water, and just spray it in your face, and it should help, question mark? They're like fog grenades. You trip them, you toss them in, it fills up the room, and they come out crying. It's like a bug bomb, but for people. Yeah. I'm gonna need some more duct tape. All right, welcome to my meth lab. Oh, good. Let's start by sealing this up. I feel like we're about to commit a murder. We just dug our own graves, didn't we? I mean, this is the thing, right? I can't think of a place more effective than in here. We essentially have no ventilation. We really are just relying on our homemade janky gas masks. Code word, if we come running out and pull off the masks crying, it means it didn't go very well. Fox 5.3. And nothing but our janky ass homemade equipment to save us. Modern rogue test of the tear gas grenade against the homemade gas mask. Attempt one. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, no, it's, oh, it's very bad. <coughs> it's very, very bad. Oh God, it is burning. I need to get out, I think. <coughs> it's terrible, yep. You breathe very slowly. <coughs> I got a leak. <coughs> it's not good. I think I inhaled lava. Oh, it's not ideal, but, uh... hey, we're doing it. <coughs> Breathing slowly works, man. <coughs> yeah, you gotta let that charcoal activate. I can't believe it works. Oh no! Oh my god, it's getting better. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! Holy crap, no crap! I mean, that's entertaining! Yeah. 5.3 million Scoville units! <laughs> oh! Oh man! <sighs> I can't believe that worked! <laughs> The worst part was, yeah, if you breathe too quickly, it, it started burning my throat yeah, you and have, it tasted terrible. Well, and, and, and it is, I still feel a little bit of the burn all the way down my throat, but when you breathe too quickly, you could hear all of the charcoal rattling around and you could tell it wasn't binding to the capsaicin. Yeah. But, and, and it was, there was a brief moment of panic. When I hit it at first, I was like, I can't do this. I gotta go, I gotta go, yeah. I gotta go. Oh, I almost called it, but right now, when I took the mask off, I immediately felt it like stinging my face. Uh, my hands were fine. Yeah, dude. Uh, everything. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna touch my face or nothing, but. Uh, oh, I've been touching my face. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. That's a success for I the homemade so. gas mask. I've not seen anybody 
stand up to the 5.3 mil before. Have you seen videos of it taking people down? Oh, yeah. No, really? it's brutal. Like, you see, you see big, tough bouncers just crumble before this stuff. <laughs> oh my god, I just walked in there and it destroyed me. That's just the residue left in there. I oh I stood by the door as you were opening it. Oh that was too much. <sighs> Alright, well bye. Dude, it worked. You know what else works? Keeping our show growing and thriving by thanking our supporters like audible.com slash rogue. Yes. Brand new URL. Audible.com is far and away the world's largest supplier of spoken word audio entertainment. Hundreds of thousands of titles, everything from old comedy classics, speeches, and all of your favorite books. I am reading The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. That sounds like a romance novel. No, dude, is it, it is not? hardcore. Really? It's about thieves and there's alchemy and magic and whatnot. It's I badass. like all of those things. I, I am listening to Horns by Joe Hill. Dude, Joe Hill is the best. Uh, did you know that there is a free production of Lock and Key available on Audible? Com. Get out. Yeah, dude. And you can sign up. Hold on. Sounds like an ad because it is. You can sign up for 30 days by heading on over to audible.com slash rogue. Get free 30 days. Go ahead and check out stuff. If you don't like it, say Baxies. But you'll be keeping us in business and keep modern rogue, modern roguing. I feel like this scene is familiar for some reason. I think so. I don't know. We need an RV. <laughs> yeah. We'll just take it and cut like a rectangle. So the idea right is the wide part should be a band across your forehead. What you want is something like this. Ah, uh, yeah. That your face fits into, and you want the sides to wrap around a little bit. It's going so to work great. From, okay, from the front line looks like a Roman centurion mask. Okay. See? Is, it, is that a fit? The tape will help with that, but yeah, you want to make sure that you get as much contact with your skin as possible. What about there's kind of a gap up here, yeah. and then this is poking in. It feels like the pokey bits are pushing the mask off my face. Uh, so I'm going to try rounding, rounding these down. Oh, that feels much tighter. Yeah. And, and in fact, if you have it sealed off and you can suck and keep it in, then I think you got a good seal. Oh, and you could take the, uh, the cap and toss that. So what we're going to do is wrap. <laughs> the modern row makes gas masks. Ah, uh, dude, this is a big one. Yeah. Homemade gas masks. Yeah. Are you nervous? Well, cautiously optimistic. <laughs> That's encouraging. I think this is gonna be okay. My only misgiving is that all of these ingredients are readily available and none of them are terribly exotic. It's really easy to put this thing together. Well, we got two liter soda bottles, we got uh, soda cans yep. that it looks like you make the housing out of, but what's the magic go-go juice? The most important thing are the activated carbon pellets. Now these are what you find in like Brita water filters. I got it at a pet store for aquariums. So this is just from a pet store, yeah. activated charcoal. Now I know activated charcoal is what they'll give to people who have overdosed yes. or who have something in their belly. Yeah, something. it bonds with uh, the uh, contaminant that you've taken into your system. Uh, they, the vets often recommend that you give it to a dog if he eats chocolate or something else that will make an animal sick. Theoretically, we're gonna breathe through this stuff and whatever the tear gas is. Theoretically. <laughs> it's going to filter out all of the impurities, and we're going to put some cotton in there to add a little extra layer of protection on all top right, well, of let's, it. Alright, let's start. Let's, let's just dive in through. here. Step one. Yeah, step one. What you want to do is you want to cut the bottom off of the canister. And the bottom of the two liter will actually be the top of your mask. Okay. You want it to fit over your face, so you don't want to cut off too much. Uh, electrical tape, not only for sealing it up, but just for comfort, really, so that you don't have these sharp edges jabbing All into right. your skin. I kind of feel like we're the Elon Musks of garbage. <laughs> All right, I'm feeling pretty good. It's a tight seal. The next part is that we want to uh, set up the filtration system. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna take these cans 
and I was making mine rather long, actually. You figure the more that you're breathing through, the better, right? Um, yeah, and before you cut it, it's a little easier if you poke the holes in the bottom. Breathing first. holes first, okay. Yeah, All right. so you wanna get plenty of these in there. Now you're using a compass, right? Yeah, just to make several punctures. So I, I assume the thought here is we want enough that there's a free way for air to flow through, but we don't want so much that the charcoal can fall right out, right? Correct. So is, is that looking good? That looks great. So after that, you're gonna wanna put some cotton padding in there. You can use these regular little cotton discs. So those pads keep the charcoal from spilling out, but they also keep you from inhaling any kind of like heavy dude. That probably filters. Any particulates. Correct. Yeah. The trick is though, the more you put in there, that's another obstruction. And so that's the balance. You want the airflow to be going through this uh, respirator part, not coming in through the sides. Exactly. We're gonna take several spoonfuls of the charcoal pellets and just fill them up in the can. And then for extra added measure, you can take another little piece of cotton and put that on top. You were mentioning that those were difficult to breathe through, so I'm gonna try thinning this out a little bit. I went ahead and did the same thing you did. And just